The three has been taken by number 10, Peter Hegarty. Peter Hegarty into the corner, where out comes Sean McGinley. Sean is fouled by fullback. And actually, I think I see a change already. I think I see Stephen Burke has taken up uh, the marking job on Sean McGinley. Sean has placed his ball about 30, 40 metres in, halfway between the goal line and the halfway line, slightly to the left and wide. So first, first, first the first attack of the game by two cars, shot wide by Sean, Sean McGinley. Uh, Killy Beggs on the path to the final had wins over uh, Ardra Downings in a meet Columbia in the semi-final, which actually went to a replay. On the other hand, Phil Carr defeated Aru of Bally Shannon, defeated Karen Dona and defeated the highly fancy St. Junior side in the semi-final. Plays at the middle of the field where Ian Cunningham wins it. He plays it back to County Minor, the red here, Peter McGinley. Peter McGinley inside to Brendan White. Brendan, a long ball down into the right corner. Coming for it is uh, Damon McGinnis. The ball breaks. That's a line ball for Killy Begg. John Baker Boy to take it, about 40, 45 yards out from the goal. A lot of movement up front for Killy Begg. Tries to find John T. Morton, but Danny Gillespie gets the hand in there. He passes it out, it comes to Noel McDevitt. Noel McDevitt out to Joseph O'Donnell at number 7. But the ball breaks back inside to Kilka or Killy Begg. There's some danger on here now, and it's number 15. But a high ball, which goes into the corner, it's breaking down. It comes to Baker Boyle again, who in the early minutes of this game has won a lot of ball, but he misses it, and Noel McDevitt clears his line for his side. The ball comes now between Jimmy Bernard Boyle and uh, number 15, Jim Tegarty. It's a line ball for, again, Frankie Doherty, the umpire, to indicate the line ball for Kitty Beggs. It's number five, uh, Brian Connorson's down into the corner. Failing to get it there is Eamon McGinnis. Instead, it comes back. It's now back with Brendan White, who again has a lot of ball so far in this game. Likewise, Noel McDevitt comes out with that ball, looking very impressive in those early minutes. It crosses the halfway line where Peter McGinley is there to clear his lines, and he sends it out to number 12, Mark Oda No, sorry, to number 12, Paul Rowan. The fair haired Rowan. A great underage star player with Killy Beggs down the years has won a lot of honours at underage level. Uh, the ball goes in between Danny Gillespie and John T. Morin. One would have to say that Danny is having the better of this outcome so far. And Austin Wallace referee judges that Danny has uh, been fouled. So for this sense, actually, Danny is coming. He's come a good 30 yards with that ball. Danny's in the long ball down the field into the corner where the ball, a rather late. Jump, jump by Dermot Cannon on the Paul Hegarty. Paul Hegarty actually has moved into the corner and it's Stephen Burke. Yes, Stephen Burke has taken up the marking job on Sean McGinley. Out the side, the far side of the field to Paul Rowan. Paul comes across the field, throw to hand. And the ball is a very poor pass. And again, it's number 10, number 10 for Kilcar. But again, he is trying to overcarry the ball. And it comes to Noel McEvitt. Noel McEvitt looks up side to five McGinley. Stephen Burke is there with McGinley. He denies McGinley clean possession, but the ball breaks over the line. And Frankie Doherty, uh, the linesman, indicates a, a line ball for Killy Banks. It could be taken about 14 yards out. We're out on the left hand side by Sean McGinley. Sean will send it across the square where the in running number eight, uh, Anthony Diver. Anthony Diver, which looks a good shot in the first four of the game, scored by Anthony Diver for Kilcar after five minutes. As I was saying, uh, Stephen Burke has taken up the marking job on, 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 on uh, Sean McGinley. It's a case of uh, the experience and the craft of, of, McGinley, against, of uh, McGinley against the youthful Stephen Burke, the former minor fullback. He actually was minor, on the, minor fullback way back in two years ago. A great pick out from James Downey. He's gone way out past midfield. Anthony Devil wins possession. So oh, sorry, it's not Anthony Diver, it's uh, Paul, pa Paddy Hegarty, Peter Hegarty. Peter elects to take the free from the ground. It's inside the halfway line. He sends a long ball in Stephen, between Stephen Burke and McGinley. McGinley falls ground. the ball is with Stephen. Out to Brian Conaghan, a son of club chairman Bernard Conaghan. A very poor pass in, which is intercepted by Peter Hegarty, which passes across to Mark O'Donnell. Mark cuts inside Peter McGinley. And from 20 metres out, it over the bar for Kikar's second point. That, that started when Peter Hegarty interrupted a, uh, intercepted a clearance by Stephen Burke in the corner for Killy Beggs. 
He went forward and found Mark O'Donnell. Mark O'Donnell made little or no mistake from close in. So with five minutes gone, uh, a little over five minutes gone, Kilcar or Killy Beg two points. Kilcar two points, Killy Beg no score. James Lowney again with a long kick out. He certainly gets the height and he gets the distance. It goes up. Brendan White breaks it down. But it comes to uh, uh, Cornelius Giver. Cornelius Giver to Mark O'Donnell. Mark O'Donnell back to Anthony Giver. Anthony goes all on through, but Stephen Ball comes out and first times it, but it only comes back as far as Cornelius Giver. Cornelius sends it out to the corner with his race in that corner. And comes back out to Peter Egerty, who is having a very great effect on this game. And that's a great score. He was way out on the right hand side of the field, about 20 metres out from the goal line. He got that ball back. Actually, I do see the Shakar team is not seeing a selected. I see, see Kieran O'Donnell, number seven, is on the team. I, I just have to watch for who's gone off, but I definitely see that Kieran O'Donnell is on the team. Kieran was a panelist on this year's county under 16 team. And actually, if, if Kieran O'Donnell is on the team, and Dermot Cannon, I see him down here under me on the sideline. He mustn't have started. It's something we're not aware about, but he's down here on the sideline on his hands and knees, really encouraging his play the players on. The ball goes out to the far side of the lead, where Paul Rowan went. But Paul goes for the hand, comes across the field. Not doing a lot of play, but then he sends the ball up the field, where it comes inside. But it's number seven for Sukar, Joseph O'Donnell, there to clear his line. The one would have to say at this stage that Sukar looks a stronger and more hungry side. There's Jimmy Bernard Boyle back there. The grey hair Jimmy back to Stephen Buck and Stephen sends a long ball down the field where it comes between Baker Boyle. Baker got a nudge in the back but the referee didn't see it. No McDevitt w w w wins the place and now it comes to Ian Cunningham. Ian goes for the hand, he sends it into the corner where the ball breaks inside and we've got Paul Rowan run running onto it. Paul Rowan is in mark by Paddy Carr but Paul puts it inside, passes it inside to number 15, James Hegarty. James Hegarty but a pass, a bad pass that went to say, and they're way back in his own half of the field is Peter Hegarty, who certainly is making an impression on this game so far. Peter wins the free. Uh, Peter wins the free. Austin Wallace referee asked him, please go back. So he's going back about 10 metres. Peter, funny enough, uh, will play this, leave this ball on the ground. He was fouled himself, so he could actually have picked out his hand, but he likes to play it in the, on the ground. The ball breaks inside to number 15. Number 15 is James Hegarty. James across, and it comes to number 12. Number 12 is Mark O'Donnell. Mark was bearing down and goal. Peter McGinley comes inside. It comes out to Sean McGinley. Sean certainly will make use of this. But it's a very high ball, but it's going nowhere. It comes back. And Bernard Conahan out to Jimmy Bernard Boyle. Jimmy Bernard Boyle out along the left wing here to Brendan White. Brendan first times it down the field. Certainly, Kitty Beggs are winning a lot of ball. The ball goes inside him again. It's in goes left hand and send it back out to number 11. Number 11 is Declan McMillan. Declan sends the long ball into the corner, but it's, it was aimlessly wide. Kitty Beggs, while they have a lot of play around the middle of the field, certainly the Kitty the Kilcar defence was quite categorically able to deal with any attack or any forward movement at all. Uh, in actual fact, we've seen Peter Hegarty there a number of times going back out. Actually, I see now Peter has moved and he's actually playing in midfield. We're waiting. Paddy Sweeney with the kick out. And he kicks it out to the right out between Paul Rowan and Paddy Carr. Paddy Carr places the ball inside to number 15. Number 15 is Barry Mullen. Barry, again, kicks rather aimlessly wide. He had the opportunity to go forward there, but he elected to kick wide from, from a non-scoring position. The crowd is beginning to come in now. We're on the far side there. The crowd is beginning to gather in here now. On a very, very warm day, little or no breeze. Actually, as I look down here under me, the sideline flag is just lying limp in the wind. The ball comes out to the number seven for the car. Number seven is Joseph O'Donnell. Joseph O'Donnell goes back to the high ball. Doesn't get a lot of ground. It goes over there. Actually, Paul Rowan is going to come under on this ball. He doesn't. Instead, it's uh, Nigel McMillan. Nigel out to Paul Rowan. Paul Rowan sends it back into County Minor. Peter McGinley. Peter goes short of hand. Tries to go around Martin McShane or uh, Michael McShane to succeed in doing so. It's still Peter going forward. He's now inside the, he's on the 21 metre line. He's in the high left footed shot across. This, this is dropping dangerously. Uh, John T. Morton tries to win it, but it's going to. Wide ball. Wide ball. It looks very much like as if uh, the Killy Begg forwards win in that square, but referee uh, Austin Wallace didn't seem to have the pace, and Paddy, Paddy Sweeney actually took a knock in, the, in that attack. Uh, Mm -hmm. 
I see we up on the standard, they're here from all parts. They're here from Chili Beggs, they're here from Red Jews, and actually we up on the far side we see five Chili Beggs Nigerians who are here supporting their side today. And you can see them with a red flag. Um, the push of red and black possibly they could be supporting Red Jews either, but we'll carry on with the play now. Meanwhile the ball comes out the field where Paddy Carr wins it, but Paddy has a rather stupid pass. And it passes into something with Paul Rowan, but Paul is, is Seem to be pulling back Simon Carr number two. So we have 11 minutes gone in the game so far. Till Carr two points, Kelly Begg no score. It must be said it's very low scoring. Uh, Peter Hegarty, who is now actually playing out on midfield, takes that one. Up into the corner to Kevin Kieran O'Donnell. Kieran is fouled by uh, Paul Hegarty. Kieran kicks that ball inside, but Jimmy Bernard Boyle wins the race for the ball but to, with uh, Jane Pegarty. Jimmy Bernard down the field to Paul Rowan, who's certainly winning a lot of possession. Out to Baker Boyle, who started very good, but has gone quite in the last few minutes. Baker goes forward. Throw the hand once, twice, three times. It's in the high shot into the area where Paddy, Paddy Sweeney comes out. Danny Gillespie breaks the ball away and back there to collect it for two cars. Number two, uh, Raymond Carr. Raymond Carr out to number six back to Danny Gillespie coming forward coming out around midfield many a time he played out there for Sir Carr Senior going forward full back goes forward sends it into the evergreen Sean McGinley a man that also played in many positions for Sir Carr Sean back to Ke Kevin McShane Kevin McShane goes top five but he says one dummy too many and referee Austin Wallace is it good to have him carrying the ball too long Peter McGinley takes the free quick and out there on the left is Baker 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 gets a note in the back. Baker wins his free. Baker takes it himself. He sends it down between Ian Cunningham, Ian Cunningham and Peter Hegarty. Peter Hegarty, Ian Cunningham, takes it down the long inside to Nigel McMenamin to his brother Mike to his brother Declan McMenamin. Declan McMenamin is judged by referee Austin Wallace to be over carrying the ball. Down here on the sideline, I see county player Martin McHugh urging on the Kilcar players. He must be a mentor with this side. Sean McGinley goes for the man first, but the ball breaks inside, and there back to collect it is Jimmy Bernard. The grey haired Jimmy Bernard throws a hand and then kicks it out the field out between Bernard Cunahan and Mark O'Donnell. Mark breaks it out over the sideline. Bernard sends it down along the field. Down in the corner to Eamon McGinnis. Eamon fails to hold on to it. Declan McMillan goes in there, but he fails to... Ooh! And we've got a rather late, 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 late pass tackle on uh, Mark O'Donnell by Bernard Conaghan, Brian Conaghan. Peter Hegarty comes over to take this line ball. No, it's actually a free kick. Hegarty was... He has moved to midfield and has taken, having a great game so far. Sends this ball up along the wing where Sean McGinley is there, but Sean fails to reach it. So it's a line ball for Chili Beggs to be taken by Brian Conaghan. Brian is the son of Bernard, the county or the club chairman. Great game, man. Brian uh, had a number of tries for the county minors this year. Uh, didn't make it, but he's a big lad. He's a good footballer. He's only 18 years of age, so. He has many, many years to go. If you compare him with Sean McGinley, who is playing in his 44th year today for, for Kilcar. Meanwhile, back with the play. It's Noel McDevitt, who is having a fine game at centre back. The ball in, long ball inside to Sean McGinley. Sean fails to hold on to it. But back there for Tilly Beggs is Bernard Brian Conan again. Out to Brendan White. Brendan fails to win the race, and it comes instead to number eight. Number eight, Anthony Dever. Anthony is used by a referee, Austin Wallace have overcarried the ball. Meanwhile, on the far side of the field there, or just in front of the goals, is a Kilcar player down injured. I cannot make out from here. It's not Sean McGinley. I see Sean McGinley. Sean's still there. Sean's going back inside. I see Kieran O'Donnell as well. It must be number 13, number 15, James Hegarty. Would it be James Hegarty? As a 15 minutes gone, Kilcar, two points. Billy Beggs no score. Uh, as they were saying, Peter Hegarty is playing a great game for, for Kilcar. He's winning a lot of possession out on midfield. He's involved in the action. He's forever willing to go forward. In actual fact, I saw him coming with balls way out of his own defence. In a very low scoring game, Kilcar 
while they are winning a lot of possessions and making that very hard work of the of the of the of this of this game. Kenny Beggs on the other hand doing well around midfield and doing well at the back, but when that ball goes forward, uh, the Sinkar defence have, are more than able to cope with any threat posed by the the Kenny Beggs defence. I see Eamon Declan McMenamin has moved out to right half forward. I think that must mean that Baker Boyle has gone in. Yeah. I mean, Baker Boyle has gone into um, centre half forward. As we pass here, I see the newly married uh, county sen senior midfielder Anthony Malloy, who has just returned back for his honeymoon for today's county final. Uh, looking very well indeed, as is the new Mrs. Malloy. <laughs> Meanwhile, back with the action, the injured player was uh, James Hegarty. I think James is okay. I see Martin McHugh out there, Origini. Meanwhile, back with the player, Peter McGinley, taking a free kick from the ground, just inside his own half. He sends it down to the right corner, but there's nobody there. There's nobody there but number seven for the charge, Joseph O'Donnell. Joseph gives it back to number two, to two, number four, Finley McIver. Then he sends it up along, but it's Peter McGinley. Peter, who is certainly coming more and more into this game. Peter goes to send a quick pass to Baker Boyle, but instead he likes to send it into Brendan White. Brendan White into Ian Cunningham. Ian Cunningham, who possibly sends a high, a very, very high ball in between Danny Gillespie and John T. But Danny sits it away out the field where Noel McDevitt comes, wins it on his own. Goes to the hand once, twice, three times, crosses the halfway line. He's well in, well into the, he's gone into the, inside the 45, but what a waste of run because back there to clear the line for Kenny Beggs is Peter McGinley. Peter into the middle to Baker. Baker wearing number 17, trying to get his side going. Encourage him to get involved, encourage him to run. And instead of taking the quick three, he leaves it down. And Peter McGinley will now take his free from inside the own half. Peter down the middle. Not a very good one, but it could work out all right on the end. It does. A break inside to Ian Cunningham. Ian Cunningham across to Paul, to Paul Rowan. Paul cuts inside, and surely, no, but it's well blocked down by number four, Finley McIver. That ball had the look of a score about it, but Finley McIver came in, and now it's into Eamon McGuinness, who is in there and sticks it to the net. So after 50, after uh, 20 minutes or so, gone in the first half, Killy Beggs have come right back into this game with a goal. That ball. As I say, it was locked down. Paul Rowan was going through his locked down, went into the corner, and it came across. And there was Eamon McGuinness on hand to punch to the net uh, past the helpless Paddy, Paddy Sweeney. Score at this stage is two car, two points, Killy Beggs, a goal. This is actually Killy Beggs' first score of the game. So this, certain, this, is cert, this, is certainly, this is certainly the score that Killy Beggs made it. Paddy, Paddy Sweeney with the kick out. Paddy elects to kick this one out the middle. It lands out around midfield. Up goes Ian Cunningham. Ian has certainly come more into this game in the last couple of minutes. He won that ball well into the man that scored the goal, but he kicks it rather aimlessly wide. I think the big problem with Killy Beggs actually is possibly in the youth of the team and the lack of experience that they're inclined to kick when they should hold and maybe take that extra step. But certainly they're right, they're right back into this game. <laughs> Baker Boyle has moved, as I say, to centre forward. He, he's certainly shown a bit more leadership and a bit more direction for them there. Uh, Noel McDevitt hasn't, since, he, since uh, Baker went in there, hasn't been coming forward with the same authority. Paddy Sweeney from the edge of his square kicks it out. Four kickers coming out to the right. Brendan White goes for it, and instead it comes to Noel McDevitt. Noel McDevitt crossing way into his own half. He's gone inside, he's gone inside the 45. A rather high tackle coming there. Mark O'Donnell into the evergreen. Sean McGinley. Sean has surely kicked this one over the bar. Yes, he does to put his back on level terms. Gilly begs one goal. Kilcar, three points. It was a rather la harsh late tackle there on Mark O'Donnell going forward and referee. And quite rightly so, there was no need for it. It's having over with Ryan Conaghan. Brian rather went in late actually carried through even though Mark had given away the ball and Austin is taking his name he's have a rather harsh word with him twenty minutes gone in this first half 
Take Carr, three points. Tilly Briggs, one point. One goal, rather. I must say we've seen some very good referee in there by Austin Wallace. He's certainly up at the play, and in that situation, I think he elected to give advantage to the advantage. Uh, and quite right, even the, when, when the play stopped, he came back and dealt with the issue on it. I think it's Mark O'Donnell, I think, as far as I can see. Mark is certainly looking rather groggy, and I think, yes, he's been, he's been carried off. Yes, Mark has been carried off the field. Rather sad, sad sight on a county final day, but hopefully it's not too serious. Dermot, Dermot Cannon, who was elected to play at number 13, now has come in for the injured mark and is actually playing, playing at left, left full forward on Jimmy Bernard Boyle. And number 15, James Hegarty, has come out to left half forward. Brendan White wins the ball, wins the ball for the field to John T. John T. hasn't got into this game at all yet. It's come to Eamon McGuinness. It looks as if Eamon was fouled there, but the referee probably gave advantage and instead it's a free out for two car. John T. McGuinness and indeed Sean McGinley too, who both had a big, big, big say in, in, in the size reaching this final, have, have had rather quiet games so far. Danny Gillespie about to take this free, 30 metres out, out from the Kirkar goal. He sent it long right up the middle, it's not, it's a rather poor kick, but it comes, worked out all right, and it comes to Peter Hegarty. Peter turns and kicks it up the middle, where it's won by Michael McShane. Michael McShane up to Sean, Sean, Sean McGinley but Stephen Barker must say in fairness to Stephen he's shown a bit of commitment to the job of Mark and Sean McGinley today and it won't be his fault but meanwhile the play breaks on with us Jimmy Bernard Boyle the grey haired Jimmy busting his way out and rather harshly judged by referee off the Wallace to have overtied that ball as I say Stephen Barker the former county minor fullback is certainly so far in this game, keeping a very, very close eye on the veteran Sean McGinley and not allowing him to grab the initiative at all. Meanwhile, we're back with the play and it's number 10, Peter Hangerty again. A man's name that's cropping up a lot with this free. Sends it right across. But there is, is for full back, full back is Paul Hegarty. Paul Hegarty out along the wing, but it fails to reach Paul Rowan, goes out, out over for a line ball. Line ball quickly taken inside to Noel McDevitt. Noel McDevitt sends a high ball in between Peter McGinley and Ma uh, Michael McShane. The ball oh, is now with Baker. Baker way back in his own half, trying to set something up. He sends a long ball inside again, but there is grab it as no Finley McIver. Finley sends it high inside, and comes breaks between the Stephen Burke commanding in the air, wins that ball, and sends it way down the field where Declan McMenamin should win this. Declan wins it, lays it back to Peter McGinley, Peter on the run, along the ground into Brendan White, a bit too far ahead of Brendan, and there to leave the pressure for Carr and take his side out of trouble, is Paddy Carr. The ball again is won by Peter, well won inside with Paul, Peter, Sean McGinley, Sean has got inside to it, uh, Stephen Buck for the first time, it's a race between Paul Hegarty and Brian Conahan, and Brian first times it out over the line for the first 45 of the game after uh, 25 minutes, 24 and a half minutes. This is our nothing between the sides. Kilcar, not four. Killy Beggs, one goal. Actually, Killy Beggs, one goal came way back in the 20th minute. Up to that, had the North Kilcar, but Kilcar has shot about the fifth wide of the game. James Hegarty, who is now playing in the half forward line, is out where Mark O'Donnell, the injured Mark O'Donnell, was playing. I must say, for a county final, the standard of football hasn't reached any great height so far, but possibly it's un quite understandable. Uh, as I look across on the far side, the crowd's still coming in. There should be quite a big crowd here for the, the next game, which is really the one everybody's coming to watch. That's the county final between Red Hughes and the very fancied, very fancied men from Tilly Beggs. Tilly Beggs are represented here today. They're trailing. They're trailing by a point. Meanwhile, back at the play, and it's another free for Sikha. 
And again, as Peter Hagen takes it, Paul Car Paddy Carr comes forward, but Peter instead elects. It's about 37 metres out and goes into the area. Up between. Oh, great save. A brilliant save. That ball was flicked on the line. And James Lowney made a brilliant save. He didn't hold it the first time, but he held on to it the second time. And now out down the middle of the field for Baker Boyle. Baker's done all the years, all the years of experience. Wins that ball, holds it up, and tries to get it forward. He sends it inside to John T. Morton. And actually, John T. wins the first ball today, the race between himself and Danny. Back to Declan McMillan and Declan with a right footed shot which is going to the corner and it's well saved under the crossbar by Paddy Sweeney who in turn is fouled by John T. Murray. We actually witnessed a great save there by goalkeeper the young James Lowney who actually is a minor. He was a minor this year, he's on the Kenny Beggs minor team. He was very unlucky actually not to make the county minor side. But that certainly was a great save and it could be a, a crucial save before this game is over. Not alone that he, he didn't fail to hold the ball the first time, but it swiveled in his hand and he got onto it the second time and cleared out the field. And actually, we saw Paddy Sweetney having to take a ball from under his own crossbar with great danger. Meanwhile, the ball's all back out on the middle of the field. Ian Cunningham, who is coming in and out of this game and fits and starts, goes forward, sends it back. But there is Paddy Carr. Paddy Carr sends out on the right wing to number nine, Cornelius Saver, who is now playing right half, right half, left half, right half forward. Sorry. Cornelius coming into the game, sends it up into the left corner. The, the back there for Kenny Beggs is Paul Hegarty, who has moved out into the corner. Paul sends that ball out on the sideline to number 15. Number 15 is Barry Mullen. Barry sends the ball down along to Paul Rowan, who hasn't been in the game so much in the last few minutes. Paul sits first, sits to the cross field, but Austin Wallace, the referee, must have seen something. Peter McGinley with that ball in, goes in, but it's that man, Pe Peter Hegarty, who's certainly having a great game, who is certainly having a great game, he picked that ball in to Sean McGinley, but there, first, the first time, it's Danny Gillespie can do it at one end, Stephen Buck certainly is learning fast, and he can do it at the other, Paul Rowan wins the ball, lays it back to Ian Cunningham, Ian Cunningham back to Baker, Baker certainly since he moved in centre forward is getting more involved, Baker sends it along the right wing to Eamon, Eamon McMillan needs the changes done Eamon good too because he's giving him more freedom, Eamon inside to Eamon McGuinness but Eamon shot his lock down, it breaks inside to Jimmy Bernard, Jimmy Bernard, the great hit Jimmy Bernard sends it out to Baker, it's asking a lot from Baker, the ball doesn't break too kindly for him, it's first time the cross by Noel McDevitt to Peter Hegarty. Peter coming toe to hand, crossing his own halfway line. He's coming inside the 45. He's talking to see where Sean McGinley is. Sean McGinley isn't to be seen anywhere. The referee, Austin Wallace, is good to Peter, who carried that ball surely 50, 50 yards. Overcarried it. You could see the problem here there. All he could see was red shorts. He was wondering where the target man Sean McGinley was. Sean wasn't to be seen anywhere. Sean was out on the 40. Actually, he was coming inside him. It's Noel McDevitt, who's certainly having a good game as well, sending that ball in. But his grass pops inside and goes harmlessly wide. There's roughly one minute left on the clock. It's Killy Beggs, a goal to Carr, not four. Very little between the sides. So Carr have got the four scores. Killy Beggs just that one. That goal from Eamon McGinnis. 25th past Paddy Sweeney in, in, in the Kilcar goal. James Downey with the kick out out on midfield. Brendan White goes for the foul by number eight, Anthony Diver. <coughs> and Peter McGinley again will take this one. Halfway between the halfway line and the 45. Quickly taken out to Brendan Mc Brian Conahan. Brian inside, inside it, Declan McMiniman. Declan doesn't hold on to it, but it's that man, Peter Hegarty again. Up to Kieran O'Donnell. The Kieran doesn't judge the bounce properly, but Paul 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 Hegarty certainly does. Paul sends it down in the corner between uh, Barry Mullen and uh, Raymond Carr. Lines on over there on the far side and judged that the ball is way out over the line, so it's a line ball for Phil Carr. So in a what is a very low scoring game. Phil Carr is just at one point up. We're in the dying seconds of this first half. Brian Conahan certainly having a good game for Killy Beggs. Back to Paul Hegarty. Paul left footed down the field. It's a break inside to Barry Mullen. Barry wins that ball well. Alex to go to the hand. Loses the ball. He's that certainly is fouled. He's fouled by Raymond Carr. 
Paul in play to, Danny, to John T, but Danny wins the race. He, however, it comes back and it's that man again, t t Peter Hegarty. Peter is fouled on his way out. We're actually gone 28 minutes, 28 seconds, 30 seconds into injury time. So there can't be too much time left, but maybe a minute or so for that injury to Mark O'Donnell. As they're still attending to Mark down here on my left. He's talking, he's sitting up talking to them anyway, so hopefully he's not so bad. It's possibly a leg injury of some kind or other. Meanwhile, back with the player, Sean McGinley, way out from goals into Kieran O'Donnell. Kieran sends it up to the corner to Michael McShane, but Michael won't be out there because that ball's out of play. It's out over the line, so it's a line ball for Killy Beggs. Going back to take it for Killy Beggs is Paul, Paul Hegarty. They're still attending to uh, Mark O'Donnell down on the sideline here. I see County Chairman Charlie Faulkner and County Vice Chairman Jimmy McKelvey there in attendance, along with the, the Lifford uh, Civil Defence. Meanwhile, back of the field, Michael McShane inside to Sean McGinley. But there again is Stephen Bork, who's having a great game and curving Sean McGinley. And indeed, in doing so, he's curving a great threat from Chile, from Kilcar. So referee Austin Wallace, 35 seconds of injury time, calls the side set in for half time. Kilcar not four, Kilcar begs one goal. In a half, the shot Kilcar open in great fashion. We're going three points up before Kilcar begs come back and got that goal in the 20 minutes. Uh, to bring the sides all square, but Kilcar ran back in front again and deservedly leading by that single point. A beautiful day for football, not too warm, slightly overcast. The ball's out on the middle of the field. Out there, a wind in number 15 for Kilcar, James Hegarty. James sends a long ball down between Stephen Buck and Sean McGinley. Sean breaks inside, he goes toe to hand, sends it across inside to Michael McShane. Michael McShane certainly must get something here. Put a great block in there by one of the defenders who fails to hold on to it. Now it comes to Kieran Donald. Kieran doesn't hold on to it either. And it's Stephen Buck. Stephen. Sends that ball out, out to Paul Rowan. Paul is always available, always going forward. Sends it inside to Ian Cunningham. Ian fails to hold it. It comes instead to his midfield partner, Brendan White. And Brendan with a left foot long up the field between John T and Danny Gillespie. And if Stephen Burke is having a good game on Sean McGinley, Danny is certainly playing well and not showing any of his years. But however, John T wins the ball, he sends it in. In there goes Paul Rowan, but it's back. Noel McDevitt. Noel McDevitt too often during this game has come to kill Caris, so rides two tackles and comes toward a hand, hops it and sends a long ball down the middle 
where it goes between Stephen Burke and Sean McGinley. Stephen wins the race, but Stephen seems to have picked up a knock there. But meanwhile, referee has awarded a free to kill car. Sean McGinley elects to take it quickly inside to number 15. Number 15 is James Hegarty. James Hegarty sends it inside. Uh, but he was waiting on the grey hair. Jimmy, Jimmy Bernard Boyle up the field into the corner where Eamon McGuinness gets a push in the back and it's fouled Finley McKay where Finley actually hurt, hurt, got injured himself in that tackle and I can still see way over on the far side our Nigerian friend certainly seems to be enjoying himself here today Yes, our Nigerian friends from Killy Beggs. They're here at the invitation today of Bern Bern Bernard Conaghan, the Killy Beggs chairman. They haven't got very vocal yet, but I'm sure as the day goes on, they will. <laughs> we have Barry Mullen. It's Barry Mullen with a free for Killy Beggs. About 30 metres out. Half between the goals and the happy line, but Barry... Sends it wide. The mm. car not four, Kitty Beg is one goal. As the sun comes out here in McCool Park, and we have a blue patch, a blue cloud, blue clear sky. The sun comes out as Paddy Sweeney sends this ball out. It's not a very good one that's coming out to the 45, but Noel McDevitt again. And Baker Boyle. Baker takes that ball illegally from Noel McDevitt. Noel McDevitt takes it free and comes inside, but Brian Conaghan is there. Brian sends it inside to Ian Cunningham. Ian into the, ba the bearded Baker Boyle for the hand. Sends it across where Bri Brian Conaghan has gone forward. Brian takes the ball up, hops it, and sends a high ball into the area, into the danger area. John T wins that ball. He gets the better of Danny this time and likes this overhead kick into the area where Paddy Sweeney comes for it. Paddy fails to hold on to it. But back there for Sukar is number seven, Joseph O'Donnell. Joseph loses the ball. It comes in cutting him back to Paul Rowan, Dexter McMillan, to Baker Boyle. Baker fails to hold on to it, but it comes to Barry Mullen, and Barry Mullen puts the ball between the uh, post for Tilly Beggs' first point of the game after uh, two minutes of play in the second half to bring the sides all square. Sukar not four, Tilly Beggs 1 1. So certainly they've got a lot to play for now. Martin McHugh down here on the sideline with a worried look on his face. Two car for all the procession, for all the play. Certainly has been put up to them now. Harry Sweeney, a much better kick this time. Sends it out to field, out to number Number eight, number eight for two cars, Anthony Biver. Anthony scored a point in the first half. Anthony is fouled. He likes to take the quick quickly inside to Sean again. Sean beats Stephen Burke. Stephen and cuts inside and Sean goes toe to hand. He's still going forward. Stephen Burke is with him and Sean again. goes too. And he just sends it wide, inches wide. Sean showed all the years of experience, all the years of craft, all the years of playing with Killy Be with Kill Car. Actually, Sean played for the county seniors way back in 74 and 75. He played his first game for Killy Beg or for Kilcar rather, way back in 1963. And he's still going strong. James Lowney. James, James Lowney. And they're telling me here on the, on the commentary box that Sean McGinley played captain of the 1980 Kilcar senior team. Meanwhile, back at the face, here in O'Donnell, does well to be keep that ball from going out, out of play. Jimmy Bernard gave them quite a lot of attention, actually. Referee uh, Austin Wallace let, let that Bern Jimmy Bernard's given him so much attention, and Kieran wins his side free. The sun comes out here now, and Kitty Bagnus. Kieran likes to take this one from the ground. He takes it from the ground, he's going to take it himself. It's about 14 metres out, halfway between the goal line and the sideline. The ball breaks inside where it's back there is Michael McShane. Michael McShane and Peter McGinley. Michael gets that ball out. Gets it out to Peter Hegarty. Peter Hegarty back to Sean McGinley. Sean sends a high, high, high ball between uh, uh, Cornelius Shaver. But the ball breaks back to number 
Ball's now with number five for Paddy Carr. Paddy Carr to Peter Hegarty with a great first half. Peter sends that ball, a dangerous ball into the area. Sean McGinley's in there and James Lowney's in there. The ball comes off the post and the goalkeeper behaves well, collects that ball and the rebound. Sean McGinley was very unfortunate there that that ball just came off the post. But he was in like a shot, so too was James Lowney and James won the race. And got that ball as James with the cap. James now kicking this ball into the sun. So James elects to wear a cap in the second half. He goes back to the wall. And the youngster from Killy Beggs, his father is actually a Kerry man. Came to Killy Beggs some years back. He's a fisherman. So the Kerry blood certainly showing good in this young man who made a great save in the first half. The ball back with Brendan White at midfield. Brendan White out to County Minor, Peter McGinley. Peter McGinley going forward. He's inside the 45. He's coming into the 30 metre line. He's going straight through. Certainly this could be the opportunity to put Killy Beggs in front. And yes, he does. County Minor, Peter McGinley puts Killy Beggs in front for the very first time in the game. Eight minutes gone in the second half and Kelly Beggs go one point up. That was a great move by Peter McGinley. Peter McGinley won that ball just inside the entire half of the field. He's staying right half back. He went forward. He went forward and he took a shot from 30 metres out to put his side in front. The kick out from Paddy Sweeney, not a very good one. The breaks out between Declan McLennan and Declan brings it into Brendan, Brendan McGinnis. McGinn back to Declan. Declan sends a high ball in. It's going to break to John T. John T. doesn't get it. Finley McIver half gets it, but it goes back to John T. John T. And so, an overhead shot from John T. And it's a goal. Certainly, I would say, and if John T. was to admit it, he was going for a pint there. He's trying to kick that ball way out on the left there, but it's overhead kick over his left shoulder. Receives Paddy Sweeney in the field car goal under the crossbar for a goal. And it's back Kenny Pegg certainly are in the driving seat now. Declan McMinnon back into John T. John T has come more into this game. Certainly that goal will do him no harm. The ball comes inside Hamasy into Paddy Sweeney. Paddy collects it out tonight to Noel McDevitt. Noel McDevitt to Peter Hegarty. Peter had a great first half. He certainly will want to have a good second half now. The ball comes between Cornelius Giver and number four for field car for Nigel McMinnon. Ah, Referee awards are free to be taken a free to kick car which will be taken by Peter Hegarty. Peter 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 doesn't take a shed but uh, Cornelius Dever sends it inside to Noel McDevitt. Noel McDevitt left foot is in looking for Sean McGinley. Sean isn't in there, but number thirteen, number thirteen, Dermot Cannon, who came on as a sub. Dermot passes out to County number sixteen, Kevin Kieran O'Donnell. Kieran fails on to hold on to it. And number five, Brian Conahan. Clears the day for Killy Beggs, but he rather for, unfortunately for Killy Beggs, he kicks it out over the sideline for a line ball for Kilcar. So Kilcar not for Killy Beggs, 2 2. Ball breaks inside. First one, Sean McGinley going forward. Sean McGinley puts it over the bar to, 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 to bring his side back into the game if, 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 for the side fifth point. Kilcar not 5, Kitty Beggs 2-2, two, two. that's Kilcar 5, that's Kitty Beggs 8, just 3 points between the sides, but if Kilcar had all the play in the first half, they certainly did not take advantage of it, I see some changes, changes now, Kieran O'Donnell is moving out into the half forward line, and it's direct switch with Cornelius Shaver who started midfield but played most of the first half as right half forward, the ball's out in the middle of the field, well won in the middle of the field by Brendan White, Brendan is held by Anthony Diver, Brendan sends it down the middle to John T. John T is looking for the ball more in the second half. He has won the ball. But referee Austin Wallace. I didn't see that, but referee Austin Wallace has given a free against John T. So this free would have been taken by Danny Gillespie. Danny actually another man like Sean McGinley. Played for many years, many years with his car senior level. Takes a high ball out down the to the right hand side of the field here where Kieran O'Donnell goes for it Kieran O'Donnell breaks it outside and it's Paddy Carr going forward Paddy Carr inside to Michael McShane Michael McShane fails to hold it and they are to intercede for Kenny Beggs it's Peter McGinley the red haired Peter goes forward crosses the midway line sends it goes to send it across Ian Cunningham but sees that Ian is marked he now sends it across for number four for Kilcar Finley McIver is out there Finley fails to hold on to it 
But number seven for Kilcar is Joseph O'Donnell, and Joseph sends it down the field between Brian Cunahan and number 15, Jim Tegarty. Brian, as a judge by referee, has fouled Jim. John sends it inside, a quick free to Peter Hegarty. Peter Hegarty goes forward, some of the Killy Bank players questioning the decision, and now we have uh, Cornelius Stiffer going forward. Takes a shot at goal, the ball breaks across here, and here's the danger, and oh, it goes narrowly wide, narrowly wide. Certainly the gods aren't with Kil with Kilcar today. Inside five minutes, we had a Killy Sean McGinley effort coming off the post. We had a Sean McGinley shot got blasted wide when a goal out of mercy. And here again, some dithering in the defence for Killy Beggs. Keir O'Donnell was clean through. He first timed it, but he first timed it wide. A Killy Beggs mentor down behind the goal, given the man with the cap. That's James Lowney, the goalkeeper, a drink out of the magic bottle. The car not five, Kitty Beg two two. The sun shining, and Andrew McMenamin is coming on the field for uh, Kitty Beg, but he's returning again. Referee didn't see it, and it comes to number fifteen, James Hegarty, and James kicks it wide. Certainly, the car squandering a lot of chances, playing into the goals of the river in the spring, a lot of chances. Uh, Andrew McMenamin now coming on, and it's Brendan White, Brendan. He had a good enough first half, but he doesn't look rather. He looks. He doesn't look as he's injured or anything. It's just a direct switch. And yes, Andrew McMenamin, who was a county under 16 here a few years back, a county minor panelist early in the year, has gone directly in at midfield to pick up Anthony Dever. James Lowney is in with a kick, a good kick out from James. Andrew McMenamin goes for the first ball, it breaks away from him, and it comes to Kieran O'Donnell. Kieran O'Donnell to Peter Hegarty. Peter Hegarty into the corner, where out there is Sean McGinley. Sean getting the better of Stephen Burke so far in the second half. Sean was going across the thin right line, Sean was still at the ball, but it's Paul Hegarty, first time out along the ground for Kieran O'Donnell. Kieran O'Donnell, the youngster from Kilcar, goes toe to hand, the ball's beaten away from him by number five, Brian Conahan. No, it's not as Nigel McMenamin, Andrew's brother Nigel. So we have three of the McMenamins, two of them are brothers and the rest are cousins. The ball comes to number two for uh, Kilcar, Raymond Carr. Inside, Paul Hegarty, well caught. And Paul elects the first time up the field, left with it. John T. Martin comes first and Noel McDevitt. But Noel McDevitt wins it, Noel is fouled by John T. Quickly taken inside. It's the referee. The referee isn't too happy. The referee isn't too happy. He's going to warn us to take care of it. Which will be taken by either Noel McDevitt or Peter Hegarty. But Peter has taken them all today, so he possibly take this one as well. This one is halfway between the 45 and the halfway line. Peter Hegarty sends it out to the right there to um, go back to Peter Hegarty and Peter kicks it high but another one gone to the right. They've gone to the left, they've gone to the right and I see Kilcar now about to make another substitution. Number 18, Connor Lines. Another young player, just a minor this year. Connor is going on at the corner and yes it is it's Cornelius Dever who's going for an early shower. Cornelius, who has played for many years on this team, has sent her back, full back, midfield. He has played everywhere, but he has played his game so far today. Kilcar now electing to go for younger younger men, younger legs. Kieran O'Donnell, who has certainly benefited from the switch out of the corner, getting more scope inside to number 13, Dermot Cannon. Dermot didn't start the game, even though he has number 13 on his back. He came on in that uh, second half, or not early in that second, first half, when Mark O'Donnell got injured. It's Connor Lines sends that across the ball and the ball again off the crossbar. At this stage, Kilcar will be wondering that's the third one off the off the, the upright. So, we said earlier on that the river in seemed to be. A red hue stronghold. Well, I can tell you now that actually that there are a lot of red and white flags down there as well. A lot of red and white flags. There, the Killy Beggs flag. So certainly, it's not going to be just uh, the one end. It's not going to be the cop in for red hue today. 
because Killybegs are down there in numbers. It would have to say at this stage that the greater number of supporters here for Killybegs. Possibly they have come earlier because their junior side are in the... And another great save. Meanwhile, back in the day, another great save from goalkeeper James Downey. And if Killybegs do go on and win this game, there was certainly... Oh, in no small way, a great measure of this success will be go to young goalkeeper James Lowney, who has took off a string of great saves, none more so than that one. And he picked that ball over the bar. Till Carr not six, till he begs two two, just two points between the sides. Everything to play for. Oh, yeah. 17 minutes gone here in the first second half. Two points between the sides. To Car attacking, but to Car time and time again going forward and kicking a lot of wide. A lot of wide balls. Chances that could have otherwise gone astray. Meanwhile, back with the table, we've got a three for Killy Beggs, which Peter McGinley is going to take. But the referee, Austin Wallace, sees that there's a Kill Car man down injured. As I was saying there, there seems to be an awful lot of red and white flags around the ground here so far. As I say, on the far side, the stand area, the seal area is filling up well. Possibly the reason why they've come is to see their, uh, their junior side, who are actually doing well today, doing very well. The junior side is giving them something to shout for, and they certainly... Are w- the heat of the day seems to be getting to a lot of people. The, the watermen, the bottle carriers are quite busy. There's a lot of water. Number of, number of mentors on the field now with the magic bottle. It's amazing what the water will do when it kills time. It does a lot of things. It helps men who maybe wouldn't be paying too well up to now. It's Peter McGinley with his freeze inside his own half. Up into the corner, John Baker Boyle wins it. John goes for the hand, he's inside the 45, sends it inside to Andrew McMillan and the fisherman who's based in Greencastle on it. Andrew sends it wide. Andrew the trainee fisherman in Greencastle. John Bernard Boyle. Paddy Sweeney with the kick out. Not a very good risk. Now on the 45 metre line. Andrew McMinnon goes up for it. Breaks it down. Noel McDevitt going forward. No, it's not Noel McDevitt. It's Anthony Dever. Anthony Dever going forward. To the inside between Stephen Burke and Sean McGinley. Stephen kicks it away. And Peter McGinley comes and teams up. Way out to Declan McMinnon. Playing right half forward. Way back in his own 20 metre line. Out to Bernard Conaghan. Ber- Blind Conaghan to Andrew McMinnon. And Andrew certainly has made an impact since he's come on. He's gone forward, he's gone inside the 45. He's 30 metres out, he sends it across to the bearded John Boyle. Baker Boyle with a point. The put his side, he's forward in front. So after almost 20 minutes of play, it's Kelly Beggs, 2 3. Kill Carr, not 6. Paddy Sweeney again. Much better kick this time. Out to the middle. Now it comes to Ian Coney. Ian who has come into this game and passed it. Back to Andrew McMenamin. Andrew certainly made an impression he's going forward. The ball is broken from his grasp by number eight, Anthony Dever. It comes to Noel McDevitt. Noel McDevitt. It is fouled. The referee gives him a quick free, but he takes quickly. Finds James Hegarty back in his own defence. Trying to get things going. Trying to rally his forces. The ball comes between Declan McMillan and Connell Lyons. But Declan, first time, but actually I think Declan now has moved back in the half-back time. Yes, he is. Declan is staying right half-back. He started centre-forward. He played most of the first half at right half-forward. But he's now back at right half-back, marking the long-haired Connell Lyons. Peter Hegarty with a high ball in. I'm trying to find Sean again, Lee, but again, and not for the first time today. Stephen Bock comes out, he doesn't win it cleanly, but he first times it away, and it's a line ball, a line ball for, for Kilcar, way out on the far side, about 30, 35 metres out. Peter Hegarty sends it in, high ball into the middle, where it's one inside by number 13. Number 13 is Dermot Cannon. And again, I haven't kept note of them, but Kilcar certainly are missing a lot of chances in the second half. Down here on my right, I see. 
Big Charlie Tully, who is manager of this Philly Beg side, quite happy looking at the moment on his feet. Big Charlie actually came on back way back in 19... two years ago, played full forward for Killy Beg Senior. He has since retired from playing, but he has took up management both at underage level and at senior level, and he's today managing his side in a county reserve final. But meanwhile, back with the play, the ball comes out the field where it's won by Kieran O'Donnell. Kieran back to Sean McGinley, who is now out on the 40 metre line. Sean goes forward. Sean is fouled. Sean takes the free quickly inside to Michael McShane. Michael McShane tends to go left and goes right, but again, unbelievably, he slashed that ball wide when the score was easier to come by. So, with 22 and a half minutes gone here in the second half, with 22 and a half minutes gone here in the second half, it's Killy Beg, 2 3, Kilcar, not 6. And if you break that down to points, Kilcar not six, Killy Beggs nine points. So there's just a three points between us. What a goal to do for Kilcar. They certainly have had a numerous chances of it. Meanwhile, back with the play, a high kick out from James Downey. It's won out there by number 10, Peter Hegarty. Peter goes forward. The ball is broken from his grasp, and Brian Conahan comes out and intercepts. Not for the first time today. Brian is having quite a good game. He tries to fight Baker Boyle, but Baker doesn't get it in there to intercept it for Kilcar is Joseph O'Donnell. Joseph sends it high up again, up between Peter Mc... Sean McGinley and Stephen. The ball breaks from them. Peter McGinley shadow on number 11, Michael McShane. Michael isn't getting anywhere. He now tries to find Sean McGinley. Sean is coming more into the game in the last couple of minutes. Since in the urges, he's since in the lead, showing all his craft and experience. On the lines with the ball and referee, Austin Wallace has alleged that Connell is fouled. Connell elects to take it from his hands and sends the ball over the bar to just put the deficit to two points. <laughs> so we're just two points between the on the lines. I see. I see another switch in the kill car side, just desperation with six minutes left on the clock, two points between the sides. Danny Gillespie's out on the middle of the field. And Peter Hegarty, quite strangely. Peter's gone back, corner back. Finley McCall McIver's gone in full back. But Danny's out on the middle. Danny's taken up in Cunningham, but the ball's coming this side of the field to Andrew. Andrew McMinniman. Andrew's certainly making an impact here today between Paul Rowe and Paul in a great first half. He's not in the play so much in the second half. There's one man that's in the play in the first half, and he's in the play again in the second half. There's a bearded Decker Boyle. He holds up the ball, he sends it across. A great ball into Ian Cunningham, and Ian should have no trouble from this angle. To put just three points between the sides again with 24 and a half minutes gone. So with five minutes, five and a half minutes left to go, Killy Banks go three points in front again. One would have to say as this pro game progresses, the Killy Beggs are looking more and more like champions. In the first half, really there was only one side in it, but that goal after 70 minutes by Eamon McGinnis certainly brought Killy Beggs back into the game. And they're certainly in it now as Peter McGinley goes forward. He goes inside the 45 metre line. He tries to find Barry Mullen outside, but instead it's Eamon McGinnis. Eamon sends it out, out to Baker Boyle. Baker's shown all the craft and experience gained down the years. Baker, whose family comes from the Rosses. I like a lot of Killy Beggs people whose family comes from the Rosses. Finley McCauver with the quick free out to Kieran O'Donnell. Kieran's now operating a right half forward. Kieran is fouled by Nigel McMinniman. Kieran is going to take the free himself. Kieran sends it inside where he finds and breaks out the Connell line. Connell's going forward, the long haired Connell. He's not very tall, but the hair certainly helps him gain his balance as he sends a shot in. And again, it comes off the post for a line ball. James Lowney faces on the ball, faces the ball on the edge of his square. There's no great sense of urgency. He's slider three points up. There's just four minutes, less than four minutes left. And whatever Austin Wallace referee, Austin Wallace from the Burt Club, will allow for extra time for injury time. But we had no real injuries in this half. We had in the first half when Mark O'Donnell went off injured. Paddy Carr with the ball from the kick out inside to Noel McDevitt. Noel misses the ball. It comes back and Nigel McMinniman brother of the second half sub Andrew, Andrew sends it out the wing where Paul Rowan wins it but he wins it outside play so it's a line ball to be taken for Kilcar by Anthony Dever 
just inside the 45. Anthony out to Danny. Danny Gillespie. One of the evergreens. Will he try and find the evergreen? He goes toe to hand. He hops it. And he sends it across the field where number six, Noel McDevitt. Noel McDevitt goes on his whole run. Toe to hand. The ball is breaking from his And Peter McGendy. Peter's having certainly sweeping up behind there and showing all the craft and all the experience he's gained with this year's minor team. We all remember Peter playing in Crow Park and how well he played. Maybe if things had been different, Peter would have been playing next Sunday. Indeed, with only Galway very unlucky and certainly Peter McGinley was no way found wanting. Meanwhile, back at the action, the Summer Kill Carman down injured. I'm not too sure who it is. John Carr, one of the Kill Carr senior players, one of the men who's gone on with the magic bottle. Oh. So just a little over two, two and a half minutes or so, plus injury time left in this game. And the score is Kilcar not seven, Killybeck two four. Just the three points between the sides. It's a case of the younger, fitter and more exper less experienced Killybeck side come look like would certainly at this stage. But the Kill Carr have nobody to blame but themselves. Paddy Carr with the quick three. Paddy finds Noel McDevitt. Noel sends a high ball into the danger area where Sean McGinley will be there or thereabouts. But he's not there this time. Instead, it's number five, Brian Connor, who's said quite well for Kitty Begg. Brian, in his effort to get the ball out, is it just to have foul Connor lines? Or was it Sean McGinley? As Sean is with the ball, he'd like to take it off the ground to just cut the, cut the deficit to just two points. And Sean sends it high and sends it over the bar to, to reduce the deficit to two points. So we've got two points between the sides here. Killy begs if they can hold out with just less than two minutes left of, on my watch. There will be some injury time, but it's, we had a longer injury spell in the first half, and I very often while it's only said 30 seconds of injury time, so I can't see him playing much this half. As I say, the only real injury, the serious delay in injury, that was in the first half, and that was when Mark O'Donnell got injured. James Lowney in no great hurry. Sends a high ball out the middle. It's a great kick out. The ball comes outside. It breaks in over. It comes to Andrew. Andrew out to Paul Rowan. Paul Rowan, the fair-haired Paul, goes toe to hand, goes to pass the team, cutting up the legs to go for his score himself. It breaks inside where Paddy Sweeney first times it out. And they're coming out to receive it for two cars, Noel McDevitt. Noel doesn't fold it, instead it's Barry Mullen. Barry Mullen goes toe to hand and with the left foot sends it across the middle where Fran Joseph O'Donnell. Joseph O'Donnell back to Noel McDevitt. Noel sends it down along the wing where Paul Paul Hegarty wins the ball against uh, James Hegarty. And Paul punches it out over the sideline for a line ball for Killy Begg. So the badly taken line ball comes this to Paul Hegarty again. And Paul in his effort to get the ball here, steers the ball out over the line. Now mentors on both sides, I can see the Killy Begg subs down here on my right, they're out on their dugout, they're out on their feet, they can sense victory. And back there is Baker Boyle. Number 15 for Killy Beggs is Jim Tegarty into Sean McGinley. This certainly is a last, last, last effort. Stephen Burke has been never too far away from Sean today and he has fouled him on this occasion. Sean sends it inside and this is looking dangerous but it's there and Connor Lines Connor Lines Connor Lines has put the ball in the net and it's a car 1-8 Killy Begg 2-4 now James Lowney's in a hurry he kicks the ball out quickly out to Stephen Burke Stephen Burke out the field but it's Joseph O'Donnell for a car going forward Joseph is a judge by referee. Also Wallace over carrying the ball. Peter McGinley takes the free off the ground. So we've got 59 seconds on my watch into his time. And it's Kilcar, 1-8. That's 11. That's Killy Begg, 2-4. That's 10. So Kilcar certainly, as often in the past, have come back from the dead. And they've come back here today. They look good in the first half. But they only led by one point at half time. In the second half, a Killy Begg side that looked out of their depth in the first half certainly came back into it in the second half and certainly were, were looking as if they were going forward and as Connor Lyons going forward again what, could it be a super sub? and he just blasted wide into the side netting James Lowney a lot more urgency than he's saying now 
James kicks the ball out, out the right where Peter McGinley has it. Peter going forward. We're going one minute, 40 seconds into extra time, but referee Austin Wallace blows the final whistle. And Kenny Begg, or Kilcar, with an injury time goal, have come and have snatched victory from the jaws of defeat. Not all, as I said in the past, time and time again, the old craft and experience of Sean McGinley, he won that ball. He won it, he kept going forward. So, final score here is uh, Kilcar 1-8, Kenny Begg 2-4. And a very small, very small Kilcar support here today over on the far side. Certainly have got something to shout about. They've taken this victory. They've taken him the dying minutes. As I said in the first half, they looked at a much, much better side. But in fairness to Kitty Begg, the youthful Kitty Begg side, they certainly had the belt for hand in the second half. But again and again, time and time again, they went forward. Were more economic, were more accurate. Some, while Kilcar, on the other hand, had a number of shots off the post and blasted wide. So we now have County Chairman Charlie Fokker here down under us waiting to make the presentation. The former County Treasurer and County Development Officer Francie Cunningham hands him the microphone. For this be an omen for what's to come, because two years ago when Killy Begg won the senior, they won the year reserve as well. Okay, in the senior game, Killy Beggs are highly fancied, highly rated. But I have a feeling the Red Jews are going to come here and they're going to surprise a lot of people. Paddy Sweeney there in among the Killy Beggs players, shaking hands with them. I must say, very dejected and very down, Killy Beggs side. So as I said, for most of that second half, it looked as if they were forcing, forcing to victory. But now we have County Chairman Charlie Faulkner to make the presentation to Danny Gillespie. As I look on the far side, yes, our Nigerian friends are there. They're still maybe disappointed, but they're still here. So County Chairman Charlie Faulkner and Danny Gillespie, two big men standing on what's not a very stable looking platform. But how Chairman Charlie Faulkner is making his speech and making his presentation. I see Mark O'Donnell has been carried back onto the field by uh, by his mentors and players. Mark, if you remember, was staying well in the first half and he got injured. But he's certainly still in his jersey and he's been congratulated by Charlie Tully, the chair, the manager of the Kitty Beg side. That must be a very disappointed Charlie because, as I said earlier on, I saw Charlie down there on that the sideline. He looked very happy. So, Charlie Fox represents the Senior Reserve Championship Cup. So, uh, delighted Danny Gillespie, who we appreciates and waves to his crowd, that small crowd over there on the far side, that's his hard support. So, I will leave you now on. The Curtain River is certainly over and the honours have gone to Kilcar, who many people felt maybe should have been here in the senior final, but they've got come some consolation and some compensation for that fact by taking the senior reserve championship final. Thank you.
Den er nødt til mig, at du ryger, og det er noget, der er helt en af mine ting. Det er jeg stærkt til jobben, og det er hovedet i, og det er en par af dem, som gør. Må vi have spurgt, at jeg selv ikke så var der, at han ikke kan tage i den, men jeg fjerner det, og det må vi have med forhåndende parker, som parker er gældt for ham, og det er sådan, at han har en større far. Vi ser, hvor hårdt vi har gjort det, når vi kan være sådan, på en udsætning ikke er det jævn. Og han kan være det nye, for det er jo ikke så hårdt, for det er jo ikke så hårdt. Og hvis det gælder jo, så gælder jo for en af de her, så er det tre stærre hårdt, som er kaldet på det, så får jeg jo det nye, og hvis det er den næste af det, så er det jo ikke en stor del af det, så er det jo ikke en stor del. Three guys in the camera again. Cut up. 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 Cut up.